Hey, welcome to Investment Secrets 101. Okay, this is Dr. Michael over here again. Everyone over here watching this video is probably gonna ask like, you know, you wanna make a lot of money. So I'm gonna talk about it very simply right now. There's only three real ways of how you can actually make money in the world. First is you work really very hard in a job. Second, I know is actually start a new business. Or third is actually investing. Well, the fourth way of doing it is actually going to politics, but that's kind of illegal in most countries. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about investing right now. I know that a lot of people over here love to hustle more or actually work more, but I'm kind of lazy. I kind of want to show you how you can actually make some money in investments. I'm going to break down the simple mechanics of how investment works. So the first thing I always want to ask people right now is if you're an investor, you kind of want to know what kind of investor that you want to be. This is a big question that many people ask themselves right now. So I'm just going to go to the basics as of today. I want to say that there's only three different type of investors that you can be or type of investors you can be. Most of you, when you first start, and especially those of you who are very young, you probably probably go into what we call the short term kind of investment. You kind of want to make that money really very fast. And when you do that, usually you go into the stock market or go into crypto or the forex market whereby you want to make high returns coming in. So a short term investment, usually beginners do it, but many, many experienced investors also do such trades. They're usually known as trading. And what do you do is basically, it's a little bit of high returns, high risk, but you could actually taper it down as well. But you're looking for high good returns of maybe anything from 10% to 30% per month. Now, the only big problem about this is most of the time, you would put in all in cash. So one of the things that most people do in short term right now is that you kind of want to put in all your cash to go in, but you want to do it for a very short period of time. Usually trades like this last from anything from minutes, right, to days, to weeks, or maximum months. Most people won't stay in it for more than a year. This is the first way of how we can do investments. I now call them and classify these kind of investments as short-term investments. Then comes the next one over here, which is actually called mid-term investments. Mid-term investments are slightly longer in durations. They're anything from three months, six months, a year to three years to five years. And this is a little bit longer in time. Now, the returns aren't as sexy. Most of the time, they're anything from six, eight percent to 20 percent max. It doesn't need to be so high because in a mid-term investment, the difference between this and the short-term investors is that there is a source of leverage. So imagine right now you found an investment that gets you 10% returns, meaning that in within three months, you get that 10% coming back or six months. In order for you to generate more money using leverage, what you do is you go out to a friend of yours. Let's say, for example, you say, hey, can I borrow a hundred bucks? If your friend says, okay, I'm going to give you a hundred ringgit coming in right now, you then put in hundred ringgit of your own money. So now there you go, you have hundred ringgit borrowed from your friends with no interest or Right? It's because he's a good friend. He say, can I borrow 100 ringgit for three months? And if he says, okay, you take the 100 ringgit, you put it together with your 100 ringgit, that becomes 200 ringgit and you put it into this investment. And let's say after three months, that 200 ringgit comes back with 10% interest. So what does that make you? That makes you 200 ringgit plus 20 ringgit extra, correct? You then take that 100 ringgit, you return back to your friend and say, thanks for borrowing me this money. And he's happy. And then you now have 100 ringgit with 20 ringgit extra. What is this 20 ringgit's return on the 100 ringgit? That's 20%. So what you've done with leverage in this case is that you have two times the returns of money. You can actually lose double the money or you can gain double the money. There's so many sources of leveraging out there. In the stock market, in the crypto market, you have things like margins, you have things like futures where you can two times the money, up to a hundred times the money. But you must really be a very good investor with a lot of experience before you do things like this. In the property market, you can have things like borrowing from the banks to finance your house as an asset investment, but you must be a very good investor to make sure that those assets actually appreciate in price. Leverage is a powerful tool, but it must be used by an investor who knows how to make that profit on a very consistent basis because losses or profits will all be amplified. So now there you go, we have the two sources of actually how what kind of investors we have. We have the final type over here and the final type is actually a long-term investor. Majority of investors I know of these days are either in the short term or in the mid term. You probably play this for a very long period of time. Long term investments are usually for people who have already accumulated enough money. So let's say for example, you've been trading for about 10 years or five years and you've made a decent amount of money. You do not want to put back into the short term or mid term too much because of the exposure or risk. There comes the long term. The long term is more of what we call a hedge where short term is trading. This one I call it as investments. The last one over here is what we call a hedge. 
A hedge is a security. A hedge is something you want to go against any other risk. And in long-term investments, usually you put them and generate a very low risk return from 2% all the way to 15% is considered pretty high. So you actually play with a lot of institutional players. Now, for example, of those kind of institutional players, we could be referring to unit trust, mutual fund, or even the banks. You could put it into an FD, which is a very bad long-term, but it is a long-term investment. It is secure. Or you could buy bonds, which are actually giving you very good returns on a very long period of time and it has that security. So this, my friends, are usually more than a year, definitely anything from five years to 10 years. Now, of course, there are more sophisticated ways of long-term investments like private equities, venture capitals that will need take your money, private placements as well, but I'm not going to talk into that. Most of all these are big institutions which will take your money if you're a high net worth individual and invest it for you for a more secure way of making money work for you. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about it right now. In the next episode, I will come back and I'll address how should you invest and what are the strategies you can get from all these three different ways. Alright, so to the next time round, if you like this right now, please drop some comments, tell me what you want to hear, ask me the questions along the way or share this to some of your friends who are eager to go out there and invest. Remember, three different ways of making money. You don't want to go into politics, so either it's work, it's business or it's investment. I hope Hope you make the best out of it and get you guys to the life that you want. So the next time around is Dr. Michael signing off. See you.